guys and welcome back to the family fudge today I'm answering your questions I recently put out a call for questions on Instagram and you guys delivered so that's what I'm doing today answering your questions so stay tuned now usually on this channel I like to do a lot of high quality informational type videos with lots of b-roll and fancy editing and music and all of that but every once in a while it's nice to do sort of a sit down low key casual video and that's exactly what I'm doing today. Oh yes, and I have all of these questions on my phone so I am going to be looking down quite a lot to get these questions and forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong or if I forget anyone's question. But without further ado, let's get started. So the first question here is from Shar Johnson and she says, I'm from England and love watching your videos. Thank you Shar. Have you ever visited England before and would you come over in the future? And the first answer is no, I've never been to England, although my parents went when I was a teenager and they did not take me. I know, I can't believe it. But I would love to go someday, it's definitely on my bucket list. The next question is from Christy. Now she also has a YouTube channel called Life with Christy, definitely check it out. But she says, I have two young kids and often feel like I'm failing at one of my roles daily. Yeah, me too, sister. I feel like that all the time. Between homeschool activities, filming, editing, cooking, and keeping up with the house, it just seems like there are never enough hours. Yep, it's right, there's never enough hours. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and how you're able to maximize your day to the fullest. Hmm, well, to be completely honest with you, I often feel exactly the same way that you do. There's almost always something that's gotta give. To tell you the truth, I don't think I juggle it very well at all. There's always something that suffers. Sometimes it's the house. My house is almost never perfectly clean. You know, my husband works from home and obviously I do, and we homeschool, so we're here all the time. So that was the first thing that I had to give up on and it was really hard because I'd love to have a perfectly clean and organized house at all times, but it's just not possible. So thankfully my husband does help quite a lot around the house and he doesn't really hold me to that perfect standard. He doesn't expect the house to be perfect. So yeah, I just try my best and move on. The next question is from Disney Dancer Gal 93 and she asks, how often do you go to Disneyland? Well, we actually live about six to seven hours away from Disneyland, so it's not that far of a drive. So that means we go pretty often. We are often annual pass holders as well. So I'd say anywhere between four to eight times a year. The next question is from Chevy Trucks 00 and she asks, do you still do as much as a whole year homeschooling even when your kids go to school as well? And I would say yes. So I have my set curriculum and that's what we work through um, during the year. And we use timeforlearning.com and we also use workbooks and things like that. So it's kind of a little bit of both. Now when they go to public school, they're mostly doing additional things. Um, classes that they call enrichment classes. So they do science experiments that are grade level appropriate. Um, they have a PE class, they have art class, and they also have a math strategies class. So it's really not a separate curriculum. It's all meant to support what they're doing at home and not like go against what we're doing at home. So it's actually a really good system. The next question is from Cup Quations. And it says, if children watch your channel like me, what would you say to them? I would say, hi, and thanks for watching. I'm so glad that you found this channel and that you enjoy it, so thank you. Now the next question is from another Jennifer, and she says, any tips for beginner YouTubers? And I would say my number one tip is to go to the YouTube channel called YouTube Creators. Now the guy that runs that channel, his name is Tim Schmoyer, watch all of his videos and learn everything that you can. Do your research. That's exactly what I did when I started. I watched all of his videos. I actually bought his book called 30 Days to a Better YouTube Channel and I followed his advice like to the T as far as you know how to title videos, how to tag videos, thumbnails, um, everything that he taught I apply in my YouTube channel. So definitely watch his videos. Next I have several questions from Winter Slime 1234 and they want to know if I have any healthy, yummy after school snack ideas and if I have any ideas on fun things to do on long car trips. And I actually have two videos on that. Yes, I have a car trip video 
and I have a healthy snack video. So I'll go ahead and link those down below because they're a, they're full of ideas and I could like talk for an hour about all those ideas. But definitely click on the link down below to just go ahead and watch those videos. The next question here is from Vanessa and she asks, how do you prevent food waste? Do you always use up all the food that you haul or does some of it ever go to waste? Do you have any tips? And I'm looking for ways to reduce food waste. And I would say overall, yes, we use up all the food um, from the hauls, except for maybe one or two things. And it's mostly vegetables, <laughs> um, things like spinach. I like to buy the big things of spinach um, from Costco. It's a really good price and it's organic, but sometimes it's hard to go through the entire thing before it goes bad. My biggest tips for saving on the waste is to freeze food. Now I do actually have a video on how to freeze food or what I like to freeze. So I'll go ahead and link it down below or I'll put it up in the uh, eye in the sky. Now another good channel that you could check out for information on um, not wasting food is a channel called Jordan Page. Um, she's a great money saving mama. Definitely check out her channel. She has a lot of good tips on money saving and freezing food and things like that. The next question here is from Lindsay. Now Lindsay also has a YouTube channel which I always have a hard time pronouncing, but it's Mama Schmooze Reviews. I'll go ahead and link her down below if you'd like to check her out. But she asks, what is my favorite thing to eat or sneak eat after my kids go to sleep? And definitely I would say Halo ice cream. Now there are some people who don't like Halo ice cream and I totally get that because some of their flavors are not very good but I do really like the candy bar flavor. I think it only has about 300 calories for the entire pint, and it literally tastes like Snickers. Snickers ice cream, there's nuts and caramel in there. It's really good. So the next questions come from Julianne. She has a couple of questions. First, she wants to know, let's see, what time do you wake up in the morning, and what time are you able to go to bed? Now, I kind of touched on this earlier, but no joke, you guys, I normally go to sleep around three o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning. And this kind of leads into another question that I'll talk about in a minute, and that's my schedule and how I balance YouTube and work and life and kids. And it's by staying up until 3 a.m. all night. <laughs> and that's another tip for um, you ladies who might want to start your own YouTube channel that it takes time, it takes time. And for me, I don't want to take that time away from my kids. So I work on YouTube after they go to bed mostly, which means I'm up till 3 a.m. And then thankfully I don't usually have to get back up super early in the morning. My husband does work from home and you guys, he feeds them breakfast every morning. He feeds the kids breakfast. I'm so thankful that he does that and he lets me sleep until eight. So from three to eight, that's when I sleep. And her next question is, let's see, what is your favorite season? And I really like the fall, the season that we're in right now. I love when the weather gets cool, I love um, the smell in the air and I love all the family gatherings and things like that. And then let's see, also she wants to know what is your most favorite cleaning product? Let's see. Hmm. I really like the apple cider scent um, from the Mrs. Myers. I thought that that was really good. But normally I just use method cleaning products and I usually just get the blue one. Yeah, the blue one. <laughs> the all purpose one I think is what it is. And then let's see. And lastly, who is your favorite YouTuber to watch? Now, that is a tough question because I watch a lot of different types of channels. I watch family channels, cooking channels, mommy channels, um, things like that. But I'd have to say, if there's one channel that I never miss an episode of, it is my friend Fallon at Moss Family TV. I watch every single one of her videos. I don't always have time to comment, but I think I like her the best because she's like my real friend in real life and through her videos I feel like we're like catching up and we're keeping in contact with each other and I really like that. So check out her channel, I'll link it down below. Okay, the next question is from Emily from the YouTube channel Mama From Scratch. Definitely check out her channel, I love her DIYs. But her question is, how do you manage YouTube and homeschool? Now I have two, two ways. Number one, my kids are still relatively young, so I have a third grader, a kindergartner, and then a preschooler. So the volume of work that they have to do in a day is not that, it doesn't take that long to get it done. And the second way is I use timeforlearning.com. So it's an online curriculum, uh, and it tells me exactly how much work that they have to do 
each day to be finished in one year. So I just follow the schedule that they give to me. I don't have to do a lot of lesson planning or anything like that, so that definitely helps. Plus my husband helps a lot too, and we also do a lot of extracurricular activities and classes outside of the house, so I'm not the sole teacher all the time. And that really helps too. The next question is from Cassidy, and she wants to know, how do you know what to pack in your kids' lunches? Now, I don't know if you guys have seen my school lunch series, but I really do enjoy making those videos, and I like that my kids appreciate the lunches as well, so it's kind of a win-win. Now, they do have a lot of ideas um, on Pinterest, and there are some other channels on YouTube that do school lunches, but I try not to get my ideas from there. Uh, I like to kind of come up with my own ideas if I can. And one of the best ways that I do that is by going up and down the aisles at different grocery stores. And I just look for new products and get some inspiration while I'm actually at the store. I like to go to places like Trader Joe's and Sprouts, stores that have like different items, things like that. Oh yes, and I also like to ask the kids. I'm constantly asking them, what would you like to have? What would you not like to have? And then I even asked my daughter the other day, next time you go to school, see what your friends are having. Maybe get some more ideas and let me know <laughs> what those things are. So, yes. The next question is from Danessa. Now, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I think it's Danessa, also known as the Pink Senorita. And she wants to know, how did you start on YouTube? Let's see, she's been going back and forth whether or not to start a channel. Oh, she has a channel, but she's not posting on a regular basis. How did I get started? Well, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the channel Family Fun Pack. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of them. They're pretty famous. Well, the mom of that channel, Christine, I actually grew up with her. We were in the same hometown, we went to the same church, and my mom actually was her hairdresser, and I sort of watched them start from the beginning and skyrocket into popularity. Um, and so I watched, I watched that and I thought, That's, that looks interesting, I could do that. So that was my first motivator to start a YouTube channel. Little did I know that it looks easy, but it's really not, it's a lot of work. Um, it takes a lot of dedication and it takes a lot of trial and error. In the beginning I did a lot of videos that um, not a lot of people were interested in seeing. And it's not until now that I figured out what people really want to watch. And so I'm making more of those types of videos. So I don't know, you also have to have thick skin if you want to be on YouTube, which I don't really have thick skin. There's always going to be people that give you thumbs downs. There's always going to be people that leave mean comments no matter what you do. So just be prepared for that. But I do have to say, like 99 times out of 100, all the comments are good and positive and people are nice. It's just the, you know, sometimes people are not and you have to be prepared for that. Okay, so lastly, I have several questions from Natalie. So thank you, Natalie, for so many awesome questions. First, she says, what is your favorite holiday and why? Uh, definitely Christmas. I love the decorations, the music, the lights, the food, especially Christmas cookies. I have very fond memories of my whole family getting together at my house when I was little, running around with my cousins and opening presents with my grandparents there. It's just such a sweet memory. I hope I hope that when my kids get older that they will have fond memories of Christmas time too. That's definitely a goal of mine. Let's see, next she wants to know, what is your favorite movie of the Harry Potter series? Yes, that is a hard question. I'd have to say probably number three, The Prisoner of Azkaban, because I feel like that's when the that's when the series took a turn into like a darker, scarier um, feel to it. I feel like the first two movies were kind of um, fun and baby-ish, if you will, but number three is when it started getting darker, when there was real fear and yeah, all that going on. But I really do like the last one too. All the Harry Potter movies are great in my book. Let's see. Lastly, she asks, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose? Let's see. Now you might think that I would say Japan because I did live in Japan and I always talk about Japan and I love Japan. Um, but it is kind of hard to live in a foreign country when you're not fluent in the language. I'm definitely not fluent in Japanese. Nihongo wa amari hanasemasen. But if I had to pick anywhere 
I know this sounds like sappy, but anywhere where my extended family could be together. Now, I grew up in um, the same town as my aunt and uncle, and my grandparents on my mom's side, and my grandmother on my dad's side, so we all lived in the same town, and so I think that's important. It doesn't necessarily matter to me where the town is, just as long as we're together, which may not happen as the years go by. We may end up being, you know, in separate states. Um, that might happen, and that might be sad, but that's life, <laughs> so yes. Okay, friends, that is all the questions for today. I love doing this so much. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below, and I would love to make another video just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.